This is the second module in, this, in the course, Business and Society. This is Jim Hazy, your instructor. This module will focus on the important topic of business ethics and social responsibility in today's rapidly changing business environment. Let's start with some ethics basics. Business ethics is defined as the principles and standards that determine acceptable conduct in business. The acceptability of behavior in business is determined by not only the organization itself, but also by its stakeholders, such as its customers, its competitors, government regulators, interest groups, and the public, as well as by each individual's personal principles and values. Most unethical activities within an organization are supported by an organizational culture. Though that in, this sometimes the culture has problems with it that encourage individuals to bend the rules, extra long coffee breaks, that sort of thing. Good ethics leads to trust, and in business, trust in all the relationships involved is the glue that holds the company, customer, employee, employee, and employee customer relationships together. The recent global financial crisis took a toll on customer trust in financial services companies, for example, that led to a reduction in borrowing and the use of the bank of banks in industry. So you can see that whenever one loses trust, it has long-term effects in the health of the business system. The tr to truly create an ethical culture, however, managers must show a strong commitment to ethics and compliance. This is the tone from the top. It requires top managers to acknowledge that their own role in supporting ethics and compliance is to create strong relationships with the general counsel and with ethics across the organization and with the client compliance department so that they everyone realizes that when the compliance department is involved so too is top management these organizations clearly communicate the company expectations for ethical behaviors what is ethical and what is not for all employees and to all employees educate all managers and supervisors about how the company's ethics policies play out and train managers and employees on what to do if ethical crises occur. In the next, le uh, next lecture, we'll look more deeply at what we mean when we talk about social responsibility. After that, we'll dive more deeply into both of these important topics. So now, let's talk about some basics about social responsibility. Many consumers and social advocates believe that businesses should not only make a profit, but also consider the social implications of all of their activities. We define social responsibility as a business's obligation to maximize its positive impact on the society and to minimize its negative impacts on the community and the broader society as well. Although many people use the term social responsibility and ethics interchangeably, they really don't mean the same thing. As we described in a prior lecture, business ethics, business ethics refers to an individual's or a work group's decisions that society val evaluates as right or wrong, how people behave, how they act, how they interact. Social responsibility is a broader concept that concerns the impact of the entire business's operations on the broader community. In the next lecture, we'll look at some of the history and background of these important concepts. Let's look at some background on the history of how corporations and their employees operate within society in this notion of corporate responsibility. Most legal issues that arise that are associated with organizations, corporations, partnerships, and the like are arose because of choices that society made, decided was unethical or irresponsible or otherwise unacceptable. 
organizations would do certain things and eventually the society says that's going a little bit too far. However, all actions deemed unethical by society aren't necessarily illegal. This table shows both legal and, and, and ethical concerns and how they've changed over time. Sometimes things that were ethical become unethical. Sometimes things that were legal but not ethical become illegal and even sometimes the reverse. This, to this table shows some of the issues in the past and how society has concerns have how, how society's concerns have been addressed and how things have changed over time. This is from the business ethics timeline from the ethics research center resource center uh, from 2003. It was updated also in 2010. Let's look at the laws. The government steps in when it's necessary to pass laws and regulations that encourage businesses to conform to society's standards, values, and attitudes. As an example, the Sarbanes-Oxley Act was enacted after several accounting scandals at well-known firms had occurred in the early 2000s and the public, it shook the public's confidence and action was taken. The act effectively criminalizes securities fraud and stiffened penalties for, corp for different kinds of corporate fraud. The Dodd-Frank Act was enacted after this most recent recession, 2008-2009, and was passed to reform the financial industry and offer consumers a level of protection against complex financial transactions and in particular against deceptive financial products. Many conflicts in business can be avoided if owners and managers and employees knew more about business law and the legal system. Business ethics, social responsibility, and the laws together act as a compliance system that requires that businesses and employees act responsible within society. Inside, regardless of what an individual believes about a particular action, if society judges it to be unethical or wrong, whether correctly or incorrectly, that judgment directly affects the organization's ability to achieve its business goals. Well-publicized incidents of unethical or illegal activity strengthen the public's perception that ethical standards and the level of trust in the business needs to be raised. It could be for particular businesses or it could affect other businesses as well. However, it's important to understand that business ethics goes beyond legal issues. Ethical conduct builds trust among individuals and in business relationships, which validates and promotes, promotes confidence in business relationships. Establishing trust and confidence is much more difficult in organizations that have reputations for acting unethicals, uh, unethically. Some acts or conduct are readily identifiable as unethical or illegal such as some of the examples here, accounting fraud, deceptive advertising, cybercrime. Ethical issues are not limited to for-profit organizations. Ethical issues include all areas of organizational activities, including government. Learning to recognize and resolve ethical concerns, challenges, and issues is a key step in evaluating and enacting ethical decisions in business. Now we'll talk a little bit about recognizing ethical issues. When one sees behaviors and activities in organizations, or when one is presented with a situation where you need to take action, recognizing an ethical issue is the most important step in understanding business ethics and what one should do in a given situation. We define an ethical issue as an identifiable problem, situation, or opportunity that requires a person to choose among several actions that may be evaluated as right or wrong, ethical or unethical. In business, such a choice often involves weighing monetary profit for the organization or compensation for the individual that a when a person considers what is the appropriate con conduct. 
The way to best judge the ethics of a decision is to look at the situation from the customer's or the competitor's viewpoint. In the next lecture, we'll look in detail at some very specific illicit acts and, discuss, and think about how these can be identified and what appropriate behavior might be in those situations. Now let's look at some specific illicit acts. Between 2004 and 2009, the apparel company Ralph Lorenz, Argentinian subsidiary, bribed customs officials to improperly obtain paperwork necessary for importing goods through customs. The permit clearance of these items without the necessary paperwork and the clearance of prohibited items on occasion to avoid inspection. Fake invoices were created to mask the payoffs, which totaled roughly $580,000 according to the case documents. Ralph Lorraine Corporation agreed to pay $1.6 million after finding that its subsidiary in Argentina repeatedly bribed the customer or customs officials. The clothing label will pay $82,000 penalty as part of a non-prosecution agreement with the Justice Department and will give up roughly $735,000 in illicit profits and interest as part of a non-prosecution agreement with the Security and Exchange Commission. The Ralph Lauren Corp stated that the bribes were wholly consistent wholly inconsistent with the culture of compliance and integrity that we have worked diligently to establish. After conducting a full investigation of the matter, Ralph Lauren Corp reported its findings promptly to the federal authorities and bolstered its, co its compliance efforts. Quote, there was no evidence that the improper activity in Argentina was known or authorized by anyone outside of that country or that similar practices were occurring at other foreign operations. The statement said, the SEC and the Justice Department both praised, both praised the company's response to the misconduct. Many business issues seem straightforward and easy to resolve on the surface, but are, but are in reality quite complex. For example, it is considered on, improper to give or accept bribes which are payments, gifts, or special favors intended to influence the outcome of a decision. Ethics is also related to the culture in which the business operates. Experience with a culture in which business operations, in which a business operates, is critical to understanding what is ethical and what is unethical. One of the principal causes of unethical behavior in organizations is overly aggressive financial or business objectives. Many of the issues related to decisions and concerns that managers have that they have to deal with on a daily basis. A decision of a few issues can help you begin to recognize ethical problems with which business persons must commonly deal. So let's look at some specific types of misconduct. This graphic shows some examples of different kinds of, of workplace misconduct. One of the principal causes of unethically, unethical behavior, as mentioned before, is aggressive financial or business objectives, but the ethic, ethical issues involve all types of organizations, including nonprofits, government, schools, and universities. The National Business Ethics Survey found that workers witnessed many instances of ethical misconduct in their organizations. The table that I've that is shown here that I referenced before shows some of the more common issues. This is from the Ethics Resource Center in 2013. One of the most common ones, or one to, to think about that is that affects many of us or many of us have seen or even been tempted to uh, be non-compliant with is what was is called the theft of company time this is a common area of misconduct that is observed every day in the workplace many employees spend an average of an hour each day using social 
networking sites and watching YouTube, something like that, or taking a extra long lunch breaks or long coffee breaks or leaving the office early, many different possibilities. Time theft costs can be difficult to measure, but they're estimated to cost companies hundreds of billions of dollars annually. It's widely believed that the average employee steals about 4.5, steals in quotes, steals about 4 point hours a week with late arrivals, leaving early, long lunch breaks, inappropriate sick days, excessive socializing, and engaging in personal activities such as online shopping and watching sports while on the job. All of these add up, add together and they, in, they, in, they create lost productivity and therefore diminish profits for the employer. That's why there's an ethical issue here. One is paid to perform certain duties and when one is not performing those duties, then there is an ethical challenge associated with that. These relate to ethical issues and is called time theft. Let's look at another one that might be common in the workplace. Abusive behavior or behavior that is might be called bullying, bullying is another common ethical problem for employees. These concepts could mean anything from physical threats, false accusations, profanity, insults, yelling, harshness, unreasonableness to ignoring someone or simply being annoying. And the meaning of these words can differ by person. You probably have some ideas of your own about what a bullying behavior looks like. Abusive behavior can be placed on a continuum from a minor distraction to a disruption of the workplace. And in fact, abusive behavior is difficult to assess and manage because of diversity of culture and lifestyles. Within the concept of abusive behavior, intent should be a consideration, but it's not the only consideration. Bullying is associated with a hostile workplace when a person or group is targeted and is, and is threatened, harassed, belittled, verbally abused, or overly criticized. Bullying may create what some consider a hostile environment, a term generally associated with sexual harassment. Sexual harassment means that the person is uncomfortable with the environment in which they are, in which they have to work because of sexual innuendo or other types of comments, regardless of the intention of the individuals who are involved. If it creates a hostile work environment, then that is a potential, has potential to be sexual harassment. Although sexual harassment has legal recourse, recourse bullying more broadly has little legal resource at this time. Uh, one of the areas where discussion continues, what is appropriate and what isn't appro appropriate, particularly given different personality styles, different cultures, and individual freedoms, and individual, the individual's uh, uh, rights to express themselves and the like. Lots of challenges associated with this particular area. Some of the things that we can think of as being associated with bullies or with bullying is intimidating behavior, uh, it's difficult to assess. Here's a list of some of the items that you, some of the things that one might see. Um, the, there's both verbal and nonverbal. It could be even physical. Um, there can be manipulations. There could be threatening expressions. There's all sorts of ways one would encounter bullying in the workplace. So one must uh, keep, themselves, uh, keep themselves open to identifying situations where bullies are being, bullying is being observed and take action rather than being a bystander, take action to obviate some of that, uh, some of the, the, some of the, um, the risks or the, the, the sense of insecurity that people face who are in those kinds of environments. Let's look at another uh, area where there's some ethical challenges, misuse of company resources. In this particular case, in organizations, you are given resources from the company for the purpose of, of achieving the resources, achieving the objectives of the company. So how does one deal with the situation that those resources can also help individuals um, manage or achieve their own personal objectives that have nothing to do with work? 
Misuse of resources was identified by the Ethics Resource Center as a leaning issue that is observed as misconduct in organizations. Issues might include spending an excessive amount of time on personal emails, submitting personal expenses on company expense reports, using the company credit card, using the company copier for personal use. The most common way that employees abuse resources is by using company computers for personal use. Typical examples of using a computer for personal use include shopping on the internet, downloading and playing music, doing, doing business for personal purposes, um, even charging, uh, 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 incurring fees at times for that sort of thing. Uh, doing personal banking, surfing the internet for entertainment purposes, visiting Facebook, essentially it's using computers and uh, time theft at the same time. Some companies have chosen to block certain websites such as YouTube or Pandora from employees. However, other companies choose to take a more flexible approach. No matter what approach your business chooses to take, it must have policies in place to prevent company of resource abuse unless uh, to be certain that employees understand their responsibilities and don't misunderstand that those assets are to be used for company purposes. Because misuse of a company resources is such a widespread problem, many companies have implemented official policy delineating what's an acceptable use of company resources and what is not. Now we'll turn to yet another important area. In fact, one that is, as one becomes more senior in management, becomes oftentimes a more difficult challenge to deal with. That's conflict of interest. A conflict of interest is one of the most common ethical issues identified by employees, and most even more so as employees become more senior or have more roles with more responsibility. Conflict of interest exists when a person must choose whether to advance his own or her own personal interests or those of a broader group, most often the whole organization. But it has to do with who it is you're representing, yourself or a broader group. Those are the interests, if you will. To avoid conflicts of interest, employees must be able to separate their personal financial interests or personal interests of other types from their business dealings. Insider trading is an example of a conflict of interest. Insider trading is the buying or selling of stocks by insiders in an organization, people that know things that others don't. They possess material that's still not public. Trading on that information in a public company is illegal. Bribery can also be a conflict of interest. While bribery is increasingly an issue in many countries, it is more prevalent in some countries than other others. In the next lecture, we'll talk about the important values that people must have in order to navigate through various kinds of conflicts of interest, as well as other ethical issues. In this lecture, we'll talk about two important values that help support ethical decision making, notions of fairness and honesty. They're a great start. Of course, sometimes ethical issues are more complex and actually difficult to solve or to resolve, but fairness and honesty is an excellent, excellent place to start. Fairness and honesty are at the heart of business ethics, and they relate to the general values that the decision makers at all levels have to make within an organization. At a minimum, business persons are expected to follow the applicable laws and regulations. That's just a minimum. Beyond that, beyond just obeying the law, they're expected not to harm customers, employees, clients, or competitors knowingly through deception, misrepresentation, coercion, or discrimination. Honesty and fairness can relate to how the employees use the resources of the organization. Employees should be aware of the policies that are 
policies about taking items and recognize how these various decisions can relate to their ethical behavior. What is the expectation of the organization, but even more importantly, or equally importantly, what is the exp expectation of the broader community? Another aspect of fairness relates to uh, companies themselves, competition around the various other companies and how companies choose to compete with other firms in their industries. Although numerous laws have been passed that foster competition and make monopolistic type practices where you control the assets and the prices in the market, in many cases illegal, companies sometimes gain control over markets by using questionable practices that harm the competition. Another aspect of fairness and honesty relates to disclosure of potential harm caused by certain products and their uses. Dishonesty has become a significant problem in the United States and in, within corporate America and how organizations function. Communication is another area in which ethical concerns may arise. False, misleading advertising as well as deceptive personal selling tactics anger consumers and can lead to the failure of a business. Truthfulness about product safety and quality are also important to consumers. Another important aspect of communications that may arise, may raise ethical concerns, relates to product labeling. Ethical behavior within a business involves keeping companies' secrets, meetings, meeting obligations and responsibilities, and avoiding undue pressure that may force others to act unethically, forcing people, if you will, coercing them, to behave in the ways that are supporting of your objectives rather than a broader organizational one. It is the responsibility of managers to create a work environment that helps the organization achieve its responsibilities and fulfill, its respon and fulfill those responsibilities and obligations. Let's take a minute to talk about an important item in, in business but also in life and in, in the academic setting, and that's plagiarism. Plagiarism is taking someone else's work and representing it as your own without mentioning the source in the appropriate manner. This is another ethical issue. Taking someone else's thoughts, someone else's ideas or work and presenting them as if they were coming from you. This is plagiarism and it has many different levels. In business, an ethical issue arises when an employee might copy a report or take the work of other of the or ideas of others <clears throat> and present it as if it is their own work, their own thoughts, as if it emanated from them, as opposed to giving appropriate credit back to the original uh, who the original uh, creators of that work. Uh, one of the problems there, of course, is you're basically stealing the attribution of the idea, but also it eliminates the possibility of following the thought process back through to its source, because essentially by claiming it was your work, you limit that you limit the fact checking that can occur by going back to the source and looking at their sources and trying to follow the chain of ideas. A manager Attempting to take credit for a subordinate's idea is also is engaging in a type of plagiarism, and this happens oftentimes in organizations where the the manager takes credit for the for the work of their subordinates, or you take credit for the work that a team presented. It's uh, it's it can have short-term benefits in the sense of getting promoted, but it has long-term consequences in terms of one's reputation in the business world. In the next lecture, we'll go into more detail about what it means to be ethical. In this lecture, we'll go into more detail about what it means for you as a worker, as an employee, as a manager, as a leader, as an entrepreneur, to act ethically in an organizational setting. It can be difficult to recognize ethical issues 
Most people need years of experience to accurately recognize and react properly in an ethical manner to many complex business situations. Once a person has recognized an ethics issue, can, they can then openly discuss it with others. They have begun the process of resolving the issue. This list contains some questions you may ask yourself when trying to determine if an action that you're anticipating or expecting or hoping to take is an ethical one. Are there any potential legal restrictions or violations that would result from this action? Does your company have a specific code of ethics or a policy on this action? Is the activity customary in your industry? Are there any trade groups that provide guidelines or codes of conduct that address this particular issue? Would this activity be accepted by your coworkers? Will your decision or your action withstand open discussion if it became a, if everyone became aware of what you did? Would it would it withstand that open the, the light of day, if you will? with coworkers and managers? Would, would your reputation survive untarnished? How does this activity fit with your own beliefs and values? These are all the kinds of questions that you would ask yourself before you act in a situation that may have ethical uh, concerns. General Motors issued a recall on its 2005 to 2007, 2007 Chevrolet Cobalt vehicles but not until at least six deaths were attributed to the Cobalt car accidents. Where the, in these cases, the airbags did not deploy due to a switch failure. It's been alleged that G, a GM engineer had encountered the problem as early as 2004. However, GM didn't issue a recall at that time. Rather, the company sent a service bulletin to its dealers advising them to install snap-on key covers that would fix the problem if customers complained. They'd only install it if customers complained. Many dealers did not install these key covers. A congressional hearing was ordered to investigate the situation, but before GM testified, it launched an additional recall of 1.5 million vehicles for electric power steering issues. You can see how ethical issues arose within this organization. Oftentimes, people in organizations, the culture is that you don't deliver bad news because people yell at you or you, you become uh, a negative person if you deliver bad news like this problem within the airbags. That can create environments where ethic, acting ethically can be difficult to do. Sometimes it's difficult for employees to determine which conduct is acceptable, particularly if the firm doesn't have an established ethics policy or standards, and if the culture might be pressing, some, pressing in some direction that is at odds with what one thinks might be the appropriate ethical approach or ethical decision. Professional codes of ethics are formalized rules and standards that describe what a company expects of its employees. Codes of ethics, policies on ethics, and ethics training programs advance ethical behavior because they prescribe which activities are acceptable and which are not. And they limit the opportunity for misconduct by providing punishment for violation of these rules and standards Codes and policies on ethics encourage the creation of an ethical culture across the company. The enforcement of ethics codes and practices and policies through rewards and punishment increase the acceptance of these ethical standards by, by employees. This is one of the important reasons that organizations should publish, clarify, and make sure everyone is aware of a code of ethics and that those ethical policies are modeled by other leaders, by the leadership, and enforced when they're not, when they are violated. One important component of an ethics environment is having, uh, giving means to employees so they can report misconduct or unethical behavior that they observe and be able to do so anonymously. 
Although the risk of retaliation for exposing some sort of a malfeasance still exists, a major, it's an, and it's a major factor, it, this, this sort of whistleblowing environment can help alleviate some of that pressure. One of the main reasons people don't report ethical violations is they're afraid it will harm them, their career or their work life in general. And so eliminating that with this anonymous way to report violations is an important step. The National Business Ethics Survey found that whistleblowing has increased in the past few years. This notion of whistleblowing occurs when an employee exposes an employer's wrongdoings to outsiders, such as the media, governments, or regulatory agencies. However, more companies are establishing programs internally to encourage employees to report illegal or unethical practices internally so that they can take steps to remedy the problem before they result in legal actions or negative publicity. In 2010, Congress passed the Dodd-Frank Act, which includes a whistleblower bounty program. That is, there a way that being a whistleblower whenever the banking system is doing something to harm consumers or to harm the business, the harm uh, on the ethical practice of loan guarantees and, and financial services events, uh, that people can can actually get some benefit from that going through this anonymous type process. The, the Securities and Exchange Commission can now award whistleblowers between 10 and 30 percent of monetary sanctions against banking companies that are over a million dollars. The current trend is to move away from legally based ethical initiatives and in organizations to more internal culturally or integrity based initiatives which makes ethics internal part of the core organizational values rather than simply relying on whether or not it's legal or illegal organizations recognize that effective business <clears throat> and ethics programs are good for business performance firms that develop high levels of trust function more efficiently and effectively and avoid damaged company reputations and product images. Firms that develop higher levels of trust function more efficiently and more effectively and avoid damage to their company's reputation and product image. In the next lecture, we'll talk a little bit more about what it means to be socially responsible within an organizational setting. In this lecture, we'll talk about what it means for an organization to be socially responsible. There are four dimensions of social responsibility, and they're illustrated here in this, fig this figure. This pyramid model is called the pyramid of social responsibility. Earning profits is the economic foundation of the pyramid, and of course, complying with the law, which is the next step. So organizations have this goal of earning a profit um, and they try to maximize that profit, but you have to do it in terms of compliance with legal and regulatory environments. However, a business whose sole objective is to maximize profits is not likely to consider its social responsibility beyond what might happen by their activities as they're making a profit beyond their borders, their boundaries even though these activities will probably be legal. Finally, voluntary responsibilities are an additional, additional activities that may not be required, but which promote human welfare and create goodwill within the community. Legal and economic concerns have been acknowledged in business, but voluntary ethic, ethical issues are more recent concerns. We define corporate citizenship as the extent to which businesses meet legal, ethical, economic, and voluntary responsibilities placed on them by their various stakeholders. A commitment to corporate citizenship by a firm indicates a strategic focus on fulfilling the social responsibility expected of it by its stakeholders. Corporate citizenship involves 
action and measurement of those actions to the of the extent to which a firm embraces corporate citizenship philosophy and then follows through by implementing citizenship and socially responsible initiatives. Although the concept of social responsibility is receiving more and more attention, it's still not universally accepted. This table lists some of the arguments for and against social responsibility for businesses. The main argument for social responsibility is that business helped create many of the social problems that are out there, and so it should play a significant role in solving them, especially in areas like pollution reduction, the cleanup of pollution, and when organizations move, a certain, move from a certain community or something like that, many jobs were dependent upon that organization being there, and so there's a repercussions within the community. How does the community deal with situ such situations? Of course, the main argument against social responsibility is that these programs, this attention to the community, distracts from the primary goal of business, which is to earn a profit. As with ethics, managers consider social responsibility on a daily basis. Among the many social issues that managers must consider are the firm's relationship with owners and stockholders, employees, consumers, the environment, and the community. For example, Indra Nuye, CEO of PepsiCo, believes that companies must embrace purpose, not just for financial results, but also for the imprint they leave on society. She goes on to say that stakeholders, including employees, consumers, and regulators, will leave no doubt that the performance without purpose is not a long-term sustainable formula. Social responsibility is a dynamic area with issues changing constantly in response to society's demands. There is much evidence that social responsibility is associated with improved business performance. Consumers are refusing to buy from businesses that receive publicity about misconduct, which of course would then drive profits down. So social responsibility and earning a profit are increasingly interrelated. Businesses must first be responsible to their owners who are primarily concerned with earning a profit or a return on the, their investment in a company. A business's responsibility to its owners and investors, as well as to the financial community at large, including maintaining proper accounting procedures, providing all relevant information to investors about the current and projected performance of the firm, and protecting the owner's rights and investments. In short, in all situations, the business has a responsibility to maximize the owner's investment in the firm. Of course, this includes both short-term maximizing investment value, but also longer-term which corporate social responsibility increasingly interacts with. While the owners are indeed important, without employees, a business cannot carry out its goals. Employees expect businesses to provide a safe workplace. In fact, Congress has passed several laws regulating safety in the workplace, many of which are enforced by the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, or OSHA. Employees expect to be paid adequately for their work. Labor unions have made significant contributions to improving wages and benefits, as well as achieving an increased level of safety in the workplace by negotiating collective bargaining agreements. Workers must want equal opportunities for all employees the equal, opportunity, the equal Employment Opportunity Commission, EEOC, covers this point, so there's not discrimination in the workplace. Many Americans today believe that business has a social obligation to provide special opportunities for women and minorities to improve their standing in society. These are all aspects of understanding and acting as a socially responsible corporate citizen. A critical issue in business today is the business's responsibility to its customers, to consumers, who look to the business to provide them with satisfying, safe, 
products and to respect their rights as consumers. The activities that independent individuals, groups, and organizations undertake to protect their rights as consumers are known as consumerism. Activities could include writing letters to companies, lobbying government agencies, making public service announcements, and boycotting companies that are deemed irresponsible. Many of the desires of those involved in the consumer movement have a foundation in John F. Kennedy's 1962 Consumer Bill of Rights, which highlighted four rights. The right to safety means that a business must not knowingly sell anything that could result in personal injury or harm to consumers. The right to be informed give consumers, gives consumers the freedom to review complete information about a product before it is purchased. The right to choose ensures that consumers have, a, have access to a variety of products and services at competitive prices. And the right to be heard assures consumers that their interests will receive full and sympathetic consideration when the government formulates policy. The role of the Federal Trade Commission's Bureau of Consumer Protection exists to protect consumers against unfair and deceptive or fraudulent practices. There are many aspects of social responsibility. An important one, which we'll cover in the next lecture, is sustainability within the environment. In this lecture, we'll talk about sustainability in the environment. Until the 20th century, people generally thought the environment of the environment totally in terms of how these resource could be, resources could be harnessed to satisfy their needs for food, shelter, transportation, and recreation. We define sustainability as conducting activities in such a way as to provide for long-term well-being of the natural environment, including all biological entities. Sustainability involves the interaction among nature and individuals, organizations, and business strategies, and it includes the assessment and improvement of business strategies, economic sectors, work practices, technologies, and lifestyles so that they maintain the health of the environment as well as all other natural systems. Environmental protection emerges a major issue in the 20th century in the face of increasing evidence that pollution, uncontrolled use of natural resources, and population growth were putting increasing pressure on the long-term sustainability of these resources. As an example of what some companies are doing, Home Depot has adopted an eight core values as the foundation for its ethical culture, including a strong emphasis on sustainability. The eight values are listed here and can be provided in more depth in a textbook. The values are taking care of the people, giving back to our communities, doing the right thing, providing excellent customer service, creating shareholder value, building strong relationships, entrepreneurial spe uh, spirit, and respect for all people. Two main sustainability issues are pollution and alternative energy. First, pollution. Water pollution results from dumping toxic chemicals and raw sewage into rivers and oceans, oil spills, and the burden of industrial white, uh, waste into the ground where it may filter into various kinds of underwater uh, reservoirs and water supplies. Uh, so the society is demanding clean water. The situation in, in Flint, Michigan over the last few years is an example where it was really lead pipes in the water supply that caused problems. Um, it's not really dumping any sort of a human activity that puts uh, chemicals like that into the water is a problem. Air pollution is usually the result of smoke and other pollutants emitted by manufacturing facilities, as well as carbon monoxide and hydrocarbons emitted by motor vehicles. These result in acid rain in the case of uh, some of those chemicals, um, but also in global warming in terms of uh, carbon and methane and other 
the, the types of, uh, of gases or chemicals that um, cause the, uh, cause the, the um, heat to be trapped in Earth uh, in, the, in the atmosphere. Land pollution results from the dumping of residential and industrial waste from strip mining, forest fires, poor forest conservation, etc. And alternative energy is an important solution because it addresses to some degree the, um, the problem of global warming by reducing the hydrocarbons in the, air, in the atmosphere. Um, so that's another sustainability issue. Um, in order to reduce those emissions, countries and companies alike are looking towards alternative energy sources, including wind power, solar power, nuclear power, biofuels, electric cars, hydro and geothermal thermal power, etc., as ways to enhance sustainability. Partly in response to federal reg legislation, such as the National Environmental Policy Act in 1969, and partly due to consumer concerns that are increasingly uh, present in the press and in the public mind, uh, businesses are responding to environmental sustainability issues. Some companies are finding environmental consciousness can even save them money. Efforts to make products, packaging, and processes more environmental friendly is called a green, green like the color green, in a green business. Many firms are trying to eliminate wasteful practices, the emission of pollutants, use of harmful chemicals, and other things from their manufacturing process. Some large companies have created a new executive position, a vice president of environmental affairs, to help them achieve their business goals in an environmentally responsible manner. Environmentalists are concerned with some companies that some companies are merely greenwashing, as they say, or creating a positive association with environmental issues, in other words, PR, public relations, uh, for their unsustainable products and services or their practices, creating a veneer, if you will, of green, or painting their business green, even though they're actually not. It's important to recognize that current technology, that with current technologies, environmentally responsible um, business requires some trade-offs. Society must weigh the huge cost of eliminating or limiting pollution against the health threats posed by the pollution and the long-term threats to the planet and to the climate. Uh, there's a balancing act there that has to be worked out. Environmental responsibility imposes costs both on the business and on the public with higher costs, higher prices, and the like. Very, very interesting and interesting area going there are two levels of greenwashing, the term I mentioned before. When a company claims they have gr they're green because they have a few green practices, such as recycling, but not, winter, not water or energy conservation, number first, or second, when the company puts on a facade about their product, saying that it looks or claims to be green, when in fact there's nothing green about it. An example of the first is a hotel chain, for example. Some will put out signs encouraging visitors on an extended stay not to have their towels and bedclothes washed every day in order to help save water, while at the same time they're serving styrofoam and plastic cups for breakfast. Uh, there's uh, plastic utensils as part of their, um, their business, which have, uh, have, some, have environmental challenges themselves. Uh, another example, example of the second type is, uh, for example, beauty products. A lot of beauty products have misleading words in their names, such as natural or herbal, pure, etc., when they actually contain chemicals and harsh components that are not derived at all in a natural context. And so they're not really, quote, green. Um, in the next lecture, we'll put some of this together and talk about how businesses and communities interact and why there's an important trend in business along the lines of ethics and social responsibility. In this last lecture of module two, we'll talk about how the business fits into the community 
and how the increasing trend in business is to remain very self-aware about how other stakeholders besides only the, the shareholders will impact the short and long-term value of their business and therefore ultimately impact their profits. A significant issue for businesses is how their responsibilities to the general welfare of their communities and society in general and how those operate together. The most common way to show a community that they have responsibility toward their community is often by local and national charitable organizations. Uh, becoming involved in the com community, being a citizen in the community. Even small companies also participate in philanthropy through donations and volunteer support of local causes and with some national charities such as Goodwill or the United Way. Um, you see some retail outlets sponsoring with the Goodwill partnerships a donate pr a promotion where when people bring jeans in and donate them to Goodwill, they might get a particularly good price on purchasing a new set of jeans uh, from the partner, from the store partners. Many companies engage in socially responsibility, so socially responsible behavior to give back to their communities. It also helps the employees feel like they're more connected with the communities in which the organization functions. For example, Home Depot partners with Habitat for the Humanities to build homes for disadvantaged families. Uh, this, uh, this lecture will con conclude our the second module, which talks about these uh, various important parts of how the business, the culture of the business forms and creates an ethical and socially responsible environment within the organization. And then th by doing that within the communities and the society uh, in a larger context. In the next module, we'll start to talk about global, the global marketplace, global business, and how the trend towards a uh, almost a global marketplace um, has be has changed the way business works and we even talk to some degree about how some recent political changes um, like in the United States election how those changes are impacting or might likely impact some of these global issues so we'll do that in the next lecture before that we're going to talk as, as, as we do, there's a discussion on in Moodle that is uh, uh, regarding this module that I'm asking you to please complete. Uh, the, questions, the questions that I'm asking you to answer include define business ethics, who, determine, who determines whether a business activity is ethical, is the unethical conduct always illegal? Um, also, do you think that business, business should regulate its own activities or should the federal government or even local governments become more involved and establish and enforce ethical standards? Um, another question for the discussion is um, what exactly do we mean by an ethical issue? What are some ethical issues? In issues that we've discussed here and that you've identified or seen in your lives. Why are these issues? Why would you consider them to be ethical issues? What about them causes you to believe that it's something that's important that organizations and businesses need to, to deal with? And finally, discuss arguments for or against social responsibility by business. Does it help? How does it help? How do we as citizens, consumers, and, and employees see through these, this greenwashing, a tendency towards greenwashing and other issues? And does it really matter to us that organizations are socially responsible going forward? So I look forward to reading your comments and your discussion uh, in the online, uh, on, online on Moodle. And we'll, uh, we'll get together again for the next module, which is about globalization of business and the globalization of the marketplace. So we will see then.